that's actually one of the things I have on the docket. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about Raw these days. Because, like, my opinion of the WWE brands, like, I think SmackDown has been, I might even include the Roman, the Roman stuff. The Roman stuff obviously speaks for itself. It's amazing. But I think SmackDown as a whole, it's a, it's been a phenomenal show since late late summer last year. And it's, it's just been ticking, like, smoothly. Raw has been kind of up and down for the last maybe year and a half, two years. You know, I'm not, look, I think Raw has a lot of holes in it. But I don't think it's, like, the, you know, the worst thing on television, in my opinion. What where are you guys at with Raw these days? Um, I would say like back when they did the brand split, and I think this was a subtle nuance that I think a lot of people missed. And a lot of people probably looked at it as Vince McMahon just, you know, working the crowd. He said he wanted competition between Raw and SmackDown. And I genuinely believe there is a creative competition between the two shows that right now SmackDown is winning. You know, I, I think that there are separate, and, and I'm fairly sure that I'm right on this, there are separate people doing creative for Raw, separate people doing creative for SmackDown, and I firmly believe that within the company, they're in competition with one another. And, you know, they're like, I take the pandemic era, you know, some people will have, you know, their, their thoughts and their feelings on Drew McIntyre's run. I think Drew McIntyre did an amazing job with what he was given during the I pandemic agree. with no crowd. Like the, the guy went out and won the Royal Rumble last year, had this amazing moment. And then, you know, 60 days later, he's wrestling in the performance center in front of nobody but a cameraman. And that's so hard to pull off. And then when, when you, you try to make this massive shift from having to feed off the crowd to now you've got to do this, it, it's, it's very hard to, to make that shift. But there were people doing amazing work on Raw, and I, I think people missed that. Like you look at uh, Apollo Crews' run with the U.S. Championship and everything that they did with the Hurt Business. Now, there were some stumbles. You know, they stumbled with uh, Retribution. And, but yeah. uh, all in all, I, I can't complain about Raw that much. It, it doesn't always hit for me, but it's just I, I think it's that competition that right now SmackDown is winning. And if you look back historically, those two shows have done this. There are periods of time where Raw is very, very good and SmackDown's it's I. Right. And now we're in that vice versa, that vice versa phase. Jay. Yo, so I think I had a problem with just Drew. No, I didn't have a problem with Drew as champion, but I'm sure I've gotten got into it with you and everybody. Drew as champion and everybody just talking about how wonderful it was. It was just like my absolute like Twilight Zone because uh, I'm like, we're living the Roman Reigns experience. He's playing all the same parts. He's doing all the same things. And yes, he's a tall, big, good-looking dude. Who, who's a hell of a wrestler both of them are and so i was just like but for some reason just you ever have any of those stars like you ever meet somebody that doesn't like coca-cola weirdos right i'm that weirdo <laughs> drew mcintyre comes out and i just i got nothing for you man i, I don't know i'm hey, surprised he, actually i know why not i i would never tell you he's a bad wrestler i never tell you he's a bad talker he's excellent just for some reason, that, that that the whole clicking thing didn't happen for me. So, I'm very biased when it comes to Raw. Um, but at the same time, right now, I think SmackDown is just firing on all cylinders. Like the women's division is crazy, the tag division is crazy. Um, it's just going to be it's and they know show no signs of slowing down. Have you always felt this way about Drew, or just since he became champion? Uh, since he became champion, when he won. Okay. Rumble and became champion and all this stuff and they like literally they had a legend raise his hand and he he did this he did that and I was just it was beat for beat the like if Roman had won at WrestleMania 31 because basically it was that journey it was WrestleMania 31 and then the aftermath of 32 that okay. squished together and that was the Drew thing anyway I'm not gonna get all crazy about it because <laughs> I like Drew. I like Drew McIntyre as a human being. I like Drew McIntyre as a wrestler. I don't, I just, it just doesn't, I don't know. He, as, a, as a top guy, in other words. I like clap. Yeah. <laughs> Rob. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I'd say, I don't think Raw is bad. I think Raw is fine. The difference between Raw and SmackDown to me, well, there are two differences, all right, is that on SmackDown, you have, 
they just the Roman Reigns story is just it's strong and it's great and it it you can and it 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 basically drives the entire show and that makes a difference because like you know during the Monday Night Wars you know Austin Steve Austin drove the show like the whole the entire episode of Raw was centered around what was going to go down between him and, and Vince that week. So, and they're kind of running the same kind of playbook with Roman, right? It basically every week is, okay, well, what's going to happen with Roman? You know, who's going to piss him off? You know, what, what's Jay going to do? And now Jimmy's in there. It's like, it's, now it's now, yeah, what's Jay going to do? What's Jimmy going to do? And now you, you know, now Seth Rollins has been drawn into the picture Right, but but there's a strong central story. There is a central storyline, and then that drives the train. And it's always a better show. It's always a better wrestling show when you have that, because it it makes the entire show just easy to follow and all of that. Uh, Raw doesn't have that. They have a bunch of what I think are good pieces, but just they don't all add up into one thing. Well, and then also the other thing on Raw is that the women's division has just been patchwork since yes. Becky left last year, and they just had one thing after another that they just had to kind of scramble and make up for, right? So, you know, I mean, Becky left, and then Kyrie Sane went back home, and then Charlotte went and had surgery, and then so all three of them were gone, right? And then Lacey, and then Lacey, Lacey Evans, Evans gets pregnant. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, she gets pregnant. And then, so then she's out of the picture. She, and she was supposed to be a big part of the story going into WrestleMania. And so she's out of the picture. And then, you know, then Charlotte goes out again because the whole fake pregnant, you know, not fake, but the false pregnancy test, oh, so whatever. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so she ends up out again. And then they got to call Rhea up early because they don't have an opponent for Oscar at WrestleMania. And now, so Rhea has been kind of just having to kind of. <sighs> You know, learn as she goes. And so there's that, whereas on SmackDown, the women's side has been pretty well defined. You know, you had Sasha and Bailey. And then once that was over, you made it, then they brought Bianca into the picture to lead up to WrestleMania. And now you got basically the, you know, Bianca championship reign story going here. So they, I mean, so it's been pretty simple and pretty easy to follow. And I think those are the those are the main two things. Like Raw just doesn't have a central narrative going, you know, at the forefront. So you just have a bunch of pieces that are all over the place. And, the, and most of the pieces are very good. I think. I think, you know, the the stuff with Bobby as champion is very good. I think uh, what's going on with Riddle and Randy Orton is good. What's now that you know, I think the stuff they're doing with Charlotte and Rhea is going better than what they're. You know, a few weeks ago, I think that's moving in a good direction. I think, uh, you know, AJ Styles and almost have a good thing going. So there's there are a bunch of different individual things that are going well, but there's no central storyline like driving the whole thing. And so, you know, things look more discombobulated. And like I said, the women's side has been discombobulated. Yeah. You know, just... right. But all that being said, I think Raw is fine. I don't think, you know, this, this, oh, it's just the worst thing ever. No, it is not. Please. I yeah. mean, okay. <laughs> no, no. I mean, look, I sat through, you know, 91 WCW and 2000 WCW. All right. And people compare stuff to 2000 WCW who never actually watched 2000 WCW. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. Believe me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, so yeah, yeah, call me when, like, you know, if, Bobby walks out on the pay-per-view where he's supposed to drop the title and he walks out and then Vince cuts the shoot promo on him, right? Call me when that happens, right? Because that's what happened in, you know, with Vince Russo and Hulk Hogan, right? Yeah. Yep. Or when you know, Yeah, I mean, so... <laughs> call me when that happens before you start making these claims. And... But, you know, I also say this is also one of those times, you know what, if... If you feel just like you know Raw is not worth your watching right now, this, I mean, I understand if you want to take a break from it now, right? Because you know, I, because SmackDown is very easy to watch, and 
like I said, Raw is fine, but it's three hours, and there's no one thing going on that makes the three hours go by All fast. Up, right. Yeah, so I understand if somebody just doesn't want to watch it right now, I don't understand like the, the worst ever kind of talk. Because yeah. it's not. But a three hour excuse is one thing, but I, I watch the uh the edited version on Hulu all the time, just down to hour and a half. So that's not a, I can't use three hour excuse anymore. The three hour the three hour excuse is legit, but it's 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 cheap at this point. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's not a lack of talent. I mean, Raw has as good a talent top to bottom as SmackDown does, honestly. It just feels like to me, SmackDown, and, and I and today I noticed it too. I went down the entire storylines going on. It just feels fresh, top to bottom. I'm into every feud. I you can even remove the Roman stuff out of SmackDown, and I'm still into the show. The Shinsuke King Corbin thing is, I, I like it a lot. You know, obviously Bianca and Bailey, you know, tore their house down at the last pay per view and they'll probably do it again. Um, it just feels like every storyline on SmackDown, I'm not even into the Mysterios thing, and that out felt that was actually okay either, or as well. So if it feels like that that show just feels fresh, right down to the broadcasting when Pat McAfee is doing call and commentary now. Dude, he's awesome on commentary. Yes, he is. 